You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Genesis as an Edited Text Part 1, Genesis 1-5 to One of the interesting results of uh, scholars looking closer and closer at Biblical texts has been to notice that the book of Genesis has the feel of a text that's been woven together an edited text. This is perhaps most obvious in the first few chapters where we get the very strong feel of two different narrators alternating, two different people telling us the story. Genesis 1, that magnificent opening chapter, is majestic and powerful. If there's anything wrong with it, it's that God seems almost distant, the language is polished, and there's a great concern for giving us information. And then, when we get to verse 4 of chapter 2, the text suddenly breaks out into a lively story, vivid, but almost coarse language gets used. For example, God moulds out of the dust of the earth a human being and blows breath into his nostrils. It's hands-on and very unlike the majestic distance of chapter 1. As we read on, chapters 2 and 3 are alike, chapter 4 again is alike, but immediately we get into chapter 5. It feels like we're back in chapter 1 and this feel is backed up by statistics there are repeated words and phrases because different people say the same thing in different ways so just take three words from Genesis chapter 1 Bayom bara Elohim none of the words is terribly exciting the first one Yom is a really everyday word it's the word for day Yom day occurs 15 times in chapter 1 if we read chapter 1 through to verse 4 of chapter 2 which I've argued elsewhere we need to do. In chapters 2 to 4 the word Yom Day only occurs six times over the three chapters but then when we get into chapter 5 it occurs 12 times. It seems as though the narrator of chapters 1 and 5 likes the word Yom much more than the narrator of chapters 2 to 4 did. Bara, create. In chapter 1 seven times the last of which is in chapter 2 verse 4 and then The next time it occurs is in chapter 5, where it occurs three times. Elohim, God, even the word God, it occurs 36 times in chapter 1 verse 1 through to 2 verse 4. And then apart from the combined form Yahweh Elohim, Lord God, combining God's name and the word God, if we exclude those ones, it only occurs once more in chapter 3, once in chapter 4, but five times in chapter 5. Oh, and just to rub it in, the word demut, likeness, is only used three times in Genesis, in chapters 1 and 5. It really feels as if, and the statistics back it up, there are two different narrators for chapters 1 and 5 and for chapters 2, 3 and 4. Again, remembering, I'm making the break at around verse 4 of chapter 2. Now, supposing we compare the genealogies in chapter 4 and chapter 5. In chapter 4, the list of people keeps breaking into story. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, and he built a city and named it Enoch after his son Enoch. That was verse 17 of chapter 4. He built a city and named it and all the rest. It's story, not a list, or not merely a list. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Mahujael, and Mahujael the father of Mahushael, and Mahushael the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives, the name of the one was Adar, the name of the other Zillah. Adar bore Jabal, and he was the ancestor of those who live in tents and have livestock. See the story? And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the ancestor of those who play the lyre and the pipe. Story. Zillah bore Tubal-Cain, who made all kinds of bronze and iron tools. The sister of Tubal-Cain was Naama, and so on. It's story. It keeps breaking into story. Compare chapter 5. Enosh lived after the birth of Kenan 815 years, and had other sons and daughters. Thus all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died, and so on and so on. Lots of numbers, but very little story, and what story there is is very restrained. Verse 23. Thus all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more because God took him. And then we're back into the facts and figures. So, you see, as we move through these chapters, we get in this early part of Genesis a very strong feeling of two different people 
telling us the story.